What's up guys, Alex, uh, coming to you with just a quick little video on a uh, nice sunny Sunday afternoon. Um, was working on a little project and was trying to plan some things out, um, kind of how to approach this and what I wanted to do. So I ran into an issue with my current computer, which has, uh, let's see here, this is not gonna be a super organized video. This is just me kind of going about, whoa, I am currently rocking this Asus X470 uh, Prime Pro. And um, this has been a good board. Like I got this, you know, regular retail price was 140. I think I got this for like 109 or something like that. So it's been a good board for me. I, um, I, I really like this one, but I did run into an issue uh, that was a limitation of the X470 chipset. So the X470 chipset, Unfortunately, I have one M.2 populating that first heatsink there, and I've got a second one now in that second heatsink, but I do use that second uh, PCIe connector for this guy right here, this uh, Elgato capture card. When you have an M.2 slot populating that second uh, NVMe drive, or a PCIe uh, connector, whatever, God, what's wrong with me? Basically, I could not use both the drive that I purchased and now the Elgato capture card. Just a limitation of how many PCIe lanes I had. So I've been thinking about upgrading my motherboard for a while and I, I finally did it. And we're going to be working by upgrading not only the RAM from a 16 gig kit to a 32 gig Corsair Platinum, uh, but we're also going to be upgrading it to this bad boy, and this is the uh, Aurorus X570 Master. And this thing's got basically, as my friend Justin would say, all the bells and whistles. So we're going to have uh, not only two, but an additional M.2 slot, so tons of room for expansion. Plenty of PCIe Express lanes um, to use for not only the graphics card, PCI Gen 4, but also all my M.2 slots, my Elgato capture card. Uh, along with like a ton of other headers, like tons of USB headers. Um, it does have the option for two 8-pin CPU connectors, so if I do want to do more overclocking down the road, I'll be able to do that. Um, and then along with that, I also did manage to trade in my 3060 Ti for a 3070 from Zotac. Figured I'd just kind of make a nice little chill video to work on for the weekend. I got nothing else to do, so. Let's go ahead and just get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our RAM slotted in because that's the easy part. Doing that one-handed. Ooh, baby. Boom, there's one. And two, there we go. Isn't that nice? Nice matte black. It's gonna look so clean. Okay, so this is what we're working with for the time being. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get that AIO pump off of there, get the RAM out of there, unscrew all this, and get all the wiring and stuff. Luckily, a lot of the, a lot of the headers we're gonna have are gonna be all in the same spot, so that it should be good. All right, so motherboard, it's out of the case. God, I was having trouble with uh, one of those CPU pins. That, extension cable I have the clip is really hard uh, so now we got it out now the process is gonna be uh, get this CPU nice and tidy get it all cleaned up uh, get my drives out of here and then we'll transfer everything over got that RTX 3070 from Zotac which I really do like how the gunmetal on this matches some of the aesthetics on there metal backplate looks good so this is gonna be I'm excited I'm excited to do this Oof. So to get this nice and cleaned up, uh, you can use, you know, a, a good isopropyl alcohol, something that is non-conductive that'll help eliminate some of that thermal paste. Uh, I do happen to have this nice stuff called Arctic Clean, which you can get at Micro Center a couple different places. It's not super expensive. I mean, you buy it once, you, you might it might last you a few years. I don't know how often you're going to be using this, but it's a two-part kit. Uh, one to help remove the actual thermal paste. And then the other one is a nice little, very nice smelling, uh, essentially cleaner to help make sure that the contact is as is, is clean as possible so that the thermal paste is uh, as good to go as it can be. I happen to just have a tube of this Arctic MX2 
So we're going to be going ahead and just using that. It's the 2019 edition. Remember that? Better times. So for this, you don't need a whole lot. Usually like a drop or two will typically do the job. And this, yeah, this stuff smells like oranges. So if you're, uh, if you're working on your PC and want to know if you happen to have COVID, uh, if you can smell this, you're probably okay. When you're doing this too, uh, be gentle. Don't don't push too hard on your socket there. You don't want to inadvertently damage you know, the pins on your CPU or anything. So if you're ever working on that, just be careful. Because yeah, that'd be a that'd be a bad time for just about everybody involved. I'm gonna do one more little. And we'll do that second part there. It's that uh, final go to just help make sure it's nice and ready. Again, a couple drops, something crazy. Don't want to drown it. Looking good. And then, of course, I'll have to do the same exact thing to my um, my block for my AIO, so we'll do that here too. All right, so we'll go ahead and pop that tension arm, bring that up, get that other one right in there. That's how it looks. Oh, maybe. Actually, be Ryzen 7 3700 X. All right, so now that this one's out of the way. All right, so uh, again, just a quick reminder to make sure when you're looking at your CPU, you look for, come on, focus, you bitch. Look at that little gold contact triangle. Line it up with the other little triangle uh, in your socket there. Go ahead and just that in. Make sure you just drop it too. Don't push it in place. Give it just a little tiny wiggle. Make sure it's all there. Lock that retention arm back down. Boom. Done. CPU installed. All right. So I got that uh, pump nice and nice and cleaned up there. So we're gonna be okay. Go ahead and get that installed. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this uh, all wired up. Get it screwed in on the standoffs and. Should be ready to go, I think. So, this is actually a problem I had on my other board too, and it's more just like, kind of a limitation of this case, almost. Uh, the front panel USB 3.0 connector, which is at the bottom of this board, is extremely hard to connect when there are fans plugged in. So, I have to basically take this fan off so that I can plug it in correctly. Uh, so give me just a sec to do that. All right, so every cable is in its place. Uh, drives are installed. Uh, got everything going here pretty well so far. So now I'm just gonna get this uh, AIO pump mounted back on there. Okay, so everything is connected. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of this run for this USB cable, but there's a, this heat sink doesn't really have a cutout to run it around anywhere, and that cable's not quite long enough to go anywhere else, so. I guess it's black, it'll be fine, whatever. Maybe I'll look at an extension cable or something down the road. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, it's looking very clean, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the graphics card installed here. Zotac RTX 3070, which should look really good with these components. Get that slotted in. There we go. And then let's see if we can get these two eight pin connectors to be as clean as I want them to look. Let's see here. It's the only thing I don't really care for is that this connection here is really, uh, it's really recessed into the shroud. So it's sort of difficult to like properly get the cables in. Um, so not ideal. 
but once you get it, I guess it's fine. It's just a little, a little more difficult than it probably needs to be just because of the cutout. There we go. All right, and then let's just see if we can try and straighten that out. It's not gonna be perfect, but these are the cable combs I have for right now. I'm working on getting more, but for now, whatever it's gonna have to do. There we go. Doesn't look awful. Definitely seen, definitely seen worse. So, all right, so let's go ahead and give it the old one-two. Ooh, love the look of that Dominator Platinum. Ooh, baby. Yeah, that looks nice. All right, let's make sure we can get into our BIOS. Nice little thing too, it's got a postcode reading, so if there's an error, we'll uh, be able to diagnose it a lot easier, which is nice. Hey, we did it, boys. Uh, let's go ahead, XMP Profile 1. Looks enabled, so that's good. Just boot into Windows, see if we make it that far. So after a couple uh, driver updates and got some other stuff installed, everything looks phenomenal. I am super, super happy with how this turned out. Um, the the board itself is, is very, very clean. Really like the, the metal and the silver accents on it and that, that platinum uh, dominator ram looks so good in there i really really like that so uh yeah that's pretty much gonna do it for this one guys i uh, just wanted to record something so uh thanks again to all my people on patreon uh benjamin ladinsky christian logan tulip the vaporian diana st charles cole cheryl lasky and jake uh thank you again for your continued support um if you want to see more stuff like this I'll, I'll try my best to to make videos when uh, i have something to show but don't always have cool um, gadgets and pro products to show off. So uh, other than that, everybody, thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.